We've seen incredible large language models with insane parameter sizes like Llama 2 70B or Gemini Ultra, and most of the times, many of us can't even get a taste of it due to the immense compute resources needed to locally host the large language model. However, today I'm going to be showing you how to run any large language model using Cloud GPU. Introducing Hyperstack. Hyperstack is a Cloud GPU service that lets you own, operate, and optimize everything down from the servers and network to the platform itself. They are also partners with NVIDIA. Now the great part is the GPU cloud service is GPU optimized, which means that it's for max performance efficiency. And this is very affordable to run on the heaviest compute resources and have it up to 75% more cost effective than hyperscalers. For example, just take a look at the cloud GPU pricing structure for Hyperstack. This gives you a good idea of which powerful GPU you can use at which price per hour. And you can clearly see that you're able to get access to the best of the best GPUs with Hyperstack. Now throughout today's video, I'll be showcasing how you can deploy large language models on the cloud using Hyperstack's GPU service. Now we're also going to be going a bit more in detail on the GPUs to use and so much more. So with that thought guys, stay tuned and let's get straight into the video. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video at the World of AI. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Hyperstack, which is a leading GPU cloud provider. It specializes in enterprise level GPU acceleration, and it offers not only the ability to deploy large language models, but it offers automated software deployment. You have customizable GPU setups and optimized networking for maximum efficiency. Now, as NVIDIA's elite cloud service partner, Hyperstack is something that is able to prioritize on sustainability and cost effectiveness, which is able to offer up to 75% savings compared to the legacy provider. Now, the great part is, is that you can do a lot with their product as you can have it used for AI, you can render machine learning, deep learning, and so many other options. For example, if you just click on AI, you're able to see that there's many different benefits of using their cloud GPU for any sort of AI model or any sort of AI use case. And they showcase which GPUs they recommend. And they also give you a good breakdown as to what you should use in terms of CPU or GPU and what's better for AI. Now, this is something that's just additional, but now I'm going to be showcasing how you can actually get started with Hyperstack and how you can deploy any sort of large language model with it. So first things first, what you need to do is click on the sign up and login button. And once you have done that, you're going to be able to then create an account with Hyperstack. You can do this with your Gmail account, or you can simply just sign up using your email. So once you have done that, we're going to be then sent over to the dashboard, which I'm going to now create my account and then showcase what you can do next. Once you have created your account with Hyperstack, you'll be then sent over to this dashboard where you're going to be able to see your virtual machine as well as the volumes that are running. Now, for this case, we're going to be showcasing how you can deploy any large language model. So what we'll need to do first is create our environment. This is by starting to create an environment where all of your resources, such as your key pairs, as well as the virtual machines will reside. You simply just need to provide a name for your environment and select the preferred region. So in this case, what we'll do, we're going to name this world of AI environment. And we're going to select Canada because this is the closest region to me. And then we're going to create our environment. After you have created your environment, you can then head over to key pairs. This is where you're going to need to import your computer's public key to enable SSH access to your virtual machine. Now, I know you may be wondering, what is an SSH key? Well, this is a key or a special code, you can say, that's used to securely connect to another computer over the internet. It comes with two separate parts. You have a public key, which is shared with your computer you want to work with or connect with. And then you also have a private key, which is something you keep safe on your own computer. They basically work together to ensure that your connection is safe from any sort of unauthorized access. So what you want to do next is create a new key pair. Now you have two options. You can import your SSH key where you're going to establish the SSH access to your virtual machine. And it's essential to import 
this key from your computer. You can also generate a new key pair, which is to establish the SSH access to your VM. And this is by having Hyperstack create a new RSA key pair for you. In this case, I'm not gonna be going over with this method. I'm just gonna be importing it from my own computer. So what you wanna do is go over to your command prompt. You can just simply type in command prompt in the search tab and you can have it opened up. Now, what they have stated is that to create an SSH key locally on your computer using the SSH key gen command. You can simply just copy this and paste this public key afterwards that is generated from your command prompt. So what you can do is just simply type this in, click enter, and it's gonna generate the public and private RSA key pair. So you're gonna then have to enter a file in which you wanna save this key. So I'm gonna save it onto my local desktop, and then I'm gonna export that key and then paste it in to this public key section. So now I'm just gonna name it something. So I'm gonna name it world of AI public key. So just name, naming it PK. And then I'm gonna generate the key pair after I, I paste the public key from the file I generated. So I'll be back once I have done this. Now I wanna emphasize this once again because it might be a hassle for you to understand. So I'm just gonna go over it once again. So what you wanna do is first start off by creating your key pair. You can open up your CMD or your PowerShell and paste this command into it. Once you have done that, it will then give you a prompt to name it and save it in a certain area. Now, once you have done that, you want to then go find the place that you saved it. And it's going to save two separate files. One's going to be a private file and one's going to be a public file. The public file is going to be the one that we're going to be working with. You don't need to worry about the private one, but the public key will be saved in this uh, format and this is the name that you gave it and what you want to do is then open that file as a notepad and you want to copy that command and paste it into that section in hyperstack and once you have done that you'll be then good be good for the next step of the video the next step is creating your own virtual machine but before we can actually do that we need to understand our large language models hardware requirements because we're going to need some of the information for that to have it deployed on hyperstack but to do that, you're going to need to then first select your large language model that you want to deploy. In this case, I'm going to be using Mistral 7B Instruct GGUF model, but you can choose any sort of model you want, whether that's the largest model. For example, you can even work with Llama 2 70 billion parameter model or even the smallest model. Whatever it may be, you can have it fully hosted with Hyperstack. So find your model on Hugging Face, for example and then go to the specifications to see what sort of compute is needed. So in this case, I'm going to be just showing this example for this Mistral model. What you can do is go all the way down in their model card, and they're going to be able to provide you information on what sort of max RAM is required, as well as the size. And it also provides you the bits and the quant method. Now, for the people who do not know, Quantization is something that is a process used to reduce the precision of numbers. And this is something that is to make them more manageable for computation or storage. In simple terms, it's a way to represent data using fewer bits and it helps saving memory and processing resources. So the lower quant you use, the cheaper it would be but it'd be less effective or efficient. And you can see that in the use case that the smallest significant quality loss not recommended for most use cases or purposes, which is why many people tend to use something in between. But if you're obviously going to be using something or a model for uh, an enterprise, for example, or any sort of business that requires higher compute or better processing in terms of the quality from the model, then it would require more memory, which would then obviously mean that you're going to need more computational power. And that would mean that you would need to use a higher quant model. This is something that you most people would tend to use. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to be going for something in between. So I'm going to be focusing on the Mistral 7B Instruct where I'm going to be focusing on four quants. And this is something that you want to keep in mind, 6.64 gigabytes. And this is the max RAM that's required. So to be on the safer side, I'm going to go for like seven. Now, once you have gotten that information, what you can do now is deploy your new virtual machine. But before you can actually do that, you're going to need to make sure that you have some sort of credits in your balance because it won't be operational if you do not have any sort of credits. So once you have inputted your credits, you can then click on deploy virtual machine and then you can name it whatever you want. So in this case, I'm going to name it Mistral VM 
And then I'm going to select my environment, which is the one that's closest to me. And now you're able to choose your flavor, which is going to showcase the spending per CPU or GPU you use. So in this case, you can go from using a hundreds all the way to RTX a 6000. Now I'm going to make another video on this because I truly believe that not a lot of people have been emphasizing on what sort of compute is needed to run any sort of model. So this is something that I'm going to be focusing on in later videos. So stay tuned with that. And I'm definitely going to be focusing on which compute you should be using for any sort of model. In the meantime, you can use this website, which will get you the memory requirements for the model you want to run. But obviously, I'm going to be making that video, so stay tuned for that. And I'll leave this link in the description below so that you can get your memory requirements. So once you have now understood what sort of memory requirements are needed, you can choose between these different options. In this case, I'm going to be moving forward with A100. I know this is overkill for my model, but something that I'm going to be going for because it's going to be a little bit more efficient. Now I'm going to be choosing an image. You can choose between Windows and Ubuntu. So choose whatever you prefer. Once that is done, you can select a key pair. Turn on this option where you're going to be assigning a public IP. This will allow your virtual machine to access the internet. You can also configure with these other options. And once that is done, you can then simply click on deploy. Now, once your virtual machine is active, you need to then go over to the security rules and enable SSH access. This is important. And once you have done that, you can then proceed forward with the tutorial. Now, what you want to do next is copy this public IP. Open up your command prompt. So once you have command prompt opened up, you can then type in sh, or uh, ssh, sorry, and then type in your name of the file. So you can name it whatever you want. In this case, I'm using this image as Windows Server. So I'm gonna write Windows, and then I'm gonna write at, and then paste the IP in, and then I'm gonna click Enter. Now this will connect my virtual machine to my computer. So this will take a couple of seconds. Once it's done, I'll be right back. Now, if that does not work, what you can do is go over to security rules and copy this command over here. In this case, it says Ubuntu because I switched my image to Ubuntu and I then have my IP over here, which is the public IP. And then you can have dash I and then the path of your SSH private key. This is where you saved it in your command prompt. And that's something that I showcased in the key pair section. So you can then put that path over here. And if you cannot find your path, you can right click on the pub file which is the key that was generated to, and then you can get the file path and import that file path in this section. And if you do not want to put that, you can just get rid of this. You can just copy this command right here, paste it into your command prompt, and then you will be able to connect to the Ubuntu server, which is your virtual machine. And this is the image that it's running. And now I can proceed forward with the installation. And now I have my computer finally connected to HyperStack. So I can then go forward and start installing my large language model with this GPU service. So now that we have connected our virtual machine with our local computer, we can now install Text Generation Web UI on it. For the people who do not know, this is a Gradio Web UI for your large language model, which means that you can chat with it, fine tune it, train it, and so much more. So what you want to do is go to this GitHub repo, scroll all the way to the top, click on, on this green button, copy this link, go to your command prompt that you just connected your virtual machine to, now, since we switched over to Ubuntu, what we're going to need to do is create a new directory. So what we're going to do is use this command for Ubuntu, which is mkdir and name whatever directory you want. So I'm going to just name it virtual machine. So VM, then I'm going to go into that folder by typing in CD VM, just like how you would with Windows. And if you do not know how to do this, you can definitely create it with another command for Windows. And if you're on the Windows servers, you would obviously use a separate command now once we're in vm what we're going to do is type in git clone and paste the repo link and if you're on ubuntu what you want to do is uh, press this command Control shift v and uh, right click on your mouse and you'll be able to clone this repo so now that we have cloned it we can then proceed forward for the installation so what you want to do next is run your command and this is the script depending on your OS obviously and then you're going to have to select your GPU vendor and once you have done that you're going to be then able to host it on your local host in this case this is going to be the local host on the GPU server and if you are to click on the local host link you're going to be able to then 
start up text generation web ui and just like that we have it running so once you have this ui running what you can do is go click on model now once you are here what you want to do is download the custom model so what you want to do is just paste the model card that you can find on hugging face so in this case for example this is just a random example you can just copy this model card you can go to text generation web ui copy and paste it and click download so i'm going to now download this and once it has finished downloading i'm going to then load it up now once it has finished downloading what you want to do is then head over to the model tab over here you want to then click on this refresh button then load the model that you just recently downloaded once you have downloaded that, you then need to click on load. And then once you have done that, you can then tweak the parameters as you would like. And then you can start chatting with it right away in this tab over here, which is the chat tab. And that is easy as that, guys. Now, once you have finished working with your virtual machine, you can actually shut it off. And that's by simply clicking on stop. Because if you do not stop your virtual machine, it's going to keep on running through your credit balance. So once you have then stopped it, you can then start it back up by clicking on virtual machines. And you're going to be able to change the status by starting it back up. But that's easy as that, guys. This is how you can run any sort of large language model that you want with HyperStack. And I truly recommend that you check this out because this is a great way for you to run any sort of model that you would like. And it's something that you can do within a couple of minutes, which is something that I actually did fairly easily. So with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next part where I'm going to be going a little bit more in depth on the GPUs to use for different large language models. But I hope you found this video to be very helpful and you got some sort of idea as to what you can do with HyperStack and how you can deploy any sort of large language model that you want with it. So I'll leave all these links in the description below. Make sure you check it out. Make sure you follow us on the Patreon page if you guys haven't already. This is a great way for you to access amazing subscriptions completely for free. Make sure you check out our Twitter page if you guys haven't already. This is a great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Spread positivity, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.